Hello and welcome. I'm Nadia Ely. Dominion Energy Strategic Underground Program aims to increase the overall reliability of our customers' electric service. This podcast, geared toward our colleagues and the public, showcases the program's benefits as it highlights those who continuously innovate the program and the strides it's making. It features subject matter experts who share their SUP expertise and experiences. This episode is all about the numbers, how the Strategic Underground Program uses the data to broaden the project and drive customer satisfaction. Joining me to tackle that are Senior Vice President of Power Delivery, Charlene Whitfield, SUP Strategic Advisor, Les Carter, and SUP Technical Coordinator, Marvin Fallen. Thank you all for being with me today. Les, I'm going to go ahead and start with you. How does the SUP team determine which lines to underground? That is, what criteria do you use to determine which lines make the cut? First, it's important to understand this is a data-driven process. We look at all the tap lines in Virginia with protective zones more than 400 feet in length that experience two or more outages events over a 10 year period. These are mostly single phase taps, but we do convert some multi-phase taps provided they only serve single phase load. Then we calculate an events per mile score for each tap line. And if that number is high enough, then the tap becomes what we call a candidate for conversion. We have a database of about 4,000 miles, including taps that have been converted some that are in process and others we haven't yet reviewed. Occasionally, we do add a non-candidate tap line if it relates to other candidate taps. Often, it's cheaper to convert all the lines in a given area, avoiding the expense of numerous riser poles, which can require switching as you transition from overhead to underground. But that is just a start. We then must look at these tap lines in the field to determine if they are good candidates based upon field conditions and system architecture. That is where folks like Marvin come in, using their expertise to ascertain the best taps to convert. Even then, we will lose certain projects as we go through the design and easement phase, as property owners are not compelled to grant us easements to bury lines or place equipment such as transformers. We do lose quite a few projects through lack of easements. Once we are through all these hurdles, then an individual tap line, or more often a group, are ready to be scheduled for conversion. But it all starts with the data. Thank you, Les, for that thorough answer and quite a great segue into Charlene's question. Charlene, in your experience, how has the Strategic Underground Program's data-driven process that Les just explained translated to initiatives in other parts of the business, such as social and economic justice and diversity and inclusion? Nadia, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. As Les mentioned, the Strategic Underground Program is a data-driven process. And I'm really proud of this effort because it is who we are as a company. At Dominion Energy, one of our core values is ethics. And it's all about doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. And we always look at every initiative from a social equity point of view. But when we have a data-driven process that helps us do that, it makes it a little bit easier for us to make those parallels between what we're doing and what we're doing from a social equity point of view. We've prided ourselves on rolling out programs that are data-driven, that are intended to benefit our customers and make life better for them from an energy point of view. The Strategic Underground Program does that. When we take a look at the data from the Strategic Underground Program, what it shows is that we are looking at those projects and we're looking at those programs from a social equity point of view. And what it shows is that we are undergrounding lines in a way that achieves social equity across our entire customer base. Our focus is always on improving reliability for these customers. And we do that by undergrounding the lines in the most outage prone areas. And that in essence is providing a benefit to all of our customers in an outage situation when we're able to roll resources from one outage area to another. So from a social equity point of view, we are doing a great job with with the Strategic Underground Program, and we're developing dashboards not only for the Strategic Underground Program, but for all of our initiatives that allow us to apply this social equity lens to make sure that we're doing the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Great point, Charlene. Thank you for sharing. Marvin, I'm going to turn to you now as a technical coordinator for the program. You're the one who's in the field, scoping proposed areas for undergrounding. How do you rely on the data to help you make the right decisions? 
The data we use for scoping proposed areas for underground is very in-depth. It shows outages that have happened in the last 10 years. It shows lengths of taps, where the taps are located, organized by county and city. It also shows the customer count. I'm able to use this data to do two important things. One, sort by the customers per model line, so I can determine will this project affect a significant amount of customers given the outage history? Second, the data helps me to see the outages per mile of line. This helps me to determine how many outages are happening per mile of line. I would also like to go over five things I'm looking for when I do travel out to the field to look at potential projects. One is constructability, constructability making sure there is enough space and proper terrain for our new underground lines and transformers. The second is equipment placement. We want to make sure our equipment is placed in a safe and accessible location. Third, we want to make sure we have the room to maneuver and operate our underground drills. Fourth, our terminal pole locations or transition points from overhead to underground, we want to make, that, make sure those are easily accessible by truck. And lastly, during the field scoping process, it is important to verify that the outage data matches field conditions. Certainly an intricate process, Marvin. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now for the last question, I'd like you all to weigh in. How does undergrounding these outage prone lines, which we use years of data to pinpoint, improve service for everyone? Charlene, I'll start with you and Les and Marvin, please share your insights as well. Thank you, Nadia. And you know, it's, it's sometimes hard to communicate to customers that even though a strategic underground project may not be occurring in their particular area, they are seeing benefits from the program. And I say that because, as I mentioned earlier, when we're in an outage situation, we're looking for opportunities to restore service to our customers as quickly as possible. By undergrounding the most outage prone lines as part of the strategic underground program, we're able to eliminate those areas from a need to provide the resources to restore service in those areas. Generally, if an outage occurs, customers who have been part of the strategic underground program are not seeing outages, are not seeing outages quite as long as they would have seen before. That enables us to then send our construction resources to those areas that are experiencing outages. And by sending those construction resources to areas that are experiencing outages, we can reduce the overall outage time from a particular storm event. For instance, if a storm comes through and knocks out power to our customers and we anticipate that it could be a three to four day outage restoration event, we may, through the strategic underground program, be able to reduce those outages, that outage time from three to four days to two to three days. And that's our overall goal is to improve reliability for all of our customers. The Strategic Underground Program allows us to do just that. So I would echo what Charlene has said. It's about resource availability and usage. Every storm has its share of real lot, heavily tree forested damage. Those repairs are extremely labor intensive and can occupy several crews for many hours. If those outage prone lines are underground, then our labor and equipment resources are available to work on other damages to restore power for customers whose lines are not placed underground. We've analyzed recent storms and find that the SUT is making significant progress in not only shortening the total length of restoration, but also freeing up resources to work in other locations. Yes, and I agree. When crews don't have to make as many repairs after a storm, it takes much less time to restore power to all customers. And faster power restoration means that life returns to normal more quickly. This decreases the economic impact on homes and businesses across the area. Such an important point to drive home. Thank you all. At this time, I'd like to open the floor if you have any points you'd like to drive home or if there's anything else you'd like to add. Nadia, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to share more information about the Strategic Underground Program and its benefits to our customers. It is a program that we're really proud of here at Dominion. It's a program that has been emulated by other utilities because of the success we've seen here at Dominion. But I think the most important part of the program is that we've been able to improve reliability for those customers who were in those outage prone areas that Les mentioned early on. 
we are able to improve their life, as Marvin indicated. And that is our goal, to make sure that we're providing a superior service to our customers each and every day. The only thing I would add is, speaking as a self-confessed math and statistics geek, it's great when you can see the conflation of the math and the statistics with a program that actually does such good work in the field, creates a more safe environment for our workers and our vendor partners. But also, as Charlene said, the ultimate benefit is for our customers, for their service and our reliability. And that's just something that I'm really proud of, too. At this time, I'd like to thank Charlene Whitfield, Les Carter, and Marvin Fallen for their time, expertise, and participation. For more information on Dominion Energy's strategic underground program, head to dominionenergy.com underground. Thanks for listening and be on the lookout for future episodes.